Hi, in this video I am going to discuss a few important questions often asked in interviews on decision tree modeling. As you know decision tree is a type of tree model that you can use for uh, predicting the target variable and you can use that for regression as well as for classification problems. So uh, there are other types of models that you can also use uh, to do that right. So the often question often this question is asked is what is the fundamental difference between uh, a decision tree and, and a regression because you can use regression models uh, such as your linear regression uh, logistic regression to do, do do the same task or uh, to solve the same problem. So what is the basic difference? Why would you go for decision tree instead of regression model or the other way around, right? Well, the main difference is the regression models are parametric in nature and I'll explain what parametric, the word parametric means. Well, regression models look something like this. You have a Y which is target variable and it's a function of different x variables which are predictors and we have different um, you know parameters like right? you know the slope coefficient and the intercept so beta naught is the intercept and beta 1 beta 2 are the slope coefficient so how do you predict the values of beta naught and beta 1 beta 2 you assume some sort of a you know normality of your uh, you know uh, regression error and then uh, you use maximum likelihood I mean in case of linear regression you can always use ordinarily square uh, and in case of uh, binary logic you can use uh, a, a, or multinomial logic you can use a maximum likelihood to be able to uh, find out the parameters beta naught beta 1 and beta 2 okay so the reason why we call this as a parametric model because we have got parameters we have got these constant values that we find from uh, you know the data and then we use that for the new data so that's exactly why we call this as a parametric model we assume some kind of a probability distribution theoretical probability distribution for the uh, for the uh, error terms okay we don't do that in decision tree we don't assume any theoretical probability distribution we do not find out any parameter so to say okay so decision tree uh, uh, they don't assume any distribution of data and no parameter estimation happens. We do not find any beta parameters. So hence we call that as a non-parametric. Now there are this fundamental difference actually uh, actually uh, you know gives rise to uh, different challenges and different you know um, different uh, merits and demerits as well. So one of the good way of having uh, a parametric model is that you can explain the causal uh, aspect of the model or you can find out the causal relationship between the predictors and the target variable. So here you can say if you increase x by one unit, x1 by one unit, how much your y will increase. If I x, uh, if I increase x by delta x, how much is going to be the delta y, okay. So that I can find it out by knowing the beta 1. Okay. So if you increase x by 1 unit, my y will go up or down depending on the sign of the beta uh, by beta 1. Okay. So that's the slope coefficient. I can't do that in decision tree. It can always find me the target variable. You can always uh, predict the target variable. But I cannot say for sure that how much uh, with an increase in one of my predictor uh, the y variable or the target variable will increase. So that luxury I do not have. So uh, this is more in terms of finding out uh, you know the relationship um, so to say the relationship between your predictors and your target variable. You also have the advantage of having the clear sign of the beta parameters, right? It can be negative, positive. So you can you can clearly say that okay, x1 affects y1 negatively or positively. Okay, so that uh, interpretation is much easier when it comes to a regression model. Okay. However, there are good things with uh, decision tree model as well. Okay, so we'll discuss in one of our, in other questions what are the 
you know advantage of using a decision tree over a, a linear regression but often times you go ahead with a linear regression model when you are concerned not only with prediction prediction of a target variable you are also concerned with the inference part you are also trying to explain the relationship between your target and uh, predictor predictors okay that means you are also in, uh, interested in finding out the marginal uh, you know marginal change marginal change is nothing but your uh, delta y by delta x so this is your marginal change that means with this if if i increase uh, x what is going to be the corresponding increase or decrease uh, in y if that is also the intention apart from prediction it's always good to go with a linear regression model Okay. Uh, often times you also get questions related to merits and demerits of decision tree over regression. We have discussed few uh, in the last slide. I'll discuss a uh, few more in this one. Okay. The merit is that it's easy to use. Okay. You can easily interpret because your decision tree will look something like this. When you explain this to non-technical audience, you can start with the first variable and you say, that, look, this is the most important variable and this divides the data into two segments and that there is further division of the data into different segments based on certain criteria and you will have cutoff values uh, at each, uh, each node, right? And easy to interpret to um, non-technical audience. However, there is a, a very major demerit of this. Uh, you can't explain the marginal effect that we have explained okay secondly uh, it's also a weak classifier a weak classifier okay and sometimes there are chances of you know overfitting because if you do not have um, you, you do not have an optimal number of tree uh, i mean you just keep on growing your tree it could overfit your data however there are you know solution to this i mean uh, you may not use a single decision tree you can use many other models which takes uh, output from a single decision tree combined with other decision tree and you know improves on this but uh, anyway if you're using only a single decision tree it it is basically a weak classifier which may not or weak predictor uh, depending on whether it's a regression or a classification problem um so uh, decision tree will not do a good job many a times uh, as compared to you know linear regression which you can always um, you know add more variables and you have a lot of lot more control over your uh, your equations all right and another important thing to mention is the linear regression assumes uh, linearity right linearity in a relation tree whereas decision tree doesn't assume any linearity so that's one good thing about decision tree that it also takes care of the non-linear uh, relationship or non-linear non pattern in your data as opposed to a linear regression which is basically a um, linear model so to say which only captures the linear uh, you know relationship between your predictors and a target variable um, uh, I'm sure if you're familiar with decision tree, you know what pruning is and people ask you what do you do, uh, how, how, what is pruning and why do you use pruning in decision tree while building decision tree models. Um, the straightforward answer to this is uh, you use a decision tree pruning uh, in decision tree modeling to increase prediction accuracy of your model. Okay. And also to optimize it, you know, you can have a very big decision tree model but that will not be efficient as such uh, firstly it would overfit uh, secondly it would not look very good you would, because you know one of the good thing with decision tree that you can if you can visualize that right that's another uh, merit of decision tree you can visualize things very well um, so if that is the case if you have a bigger tree it is very difficult to you know, interpret so smaller t is always better so pruning is uh, something that helps uh, doing that so it optimizes it you get rid of some of this uh, you know lower not so important tree and you make it smaller or more compact uh, it also gives a lot of importance to the most important variable uh, for your target variable for prediction or classification okay so basically it optimizes your decision tree it gets get reads of 
some unimportant uh, you know segments of the tree so it redu reduces the length of the tree uh, so it optimizes uh, uh, your tree thereby increasing its prediction uh, accuracy of the model what are the different uses of decision tree now you might have uh, you might have heard about the basic uses like classification and regression. Mm -hmm. So you can use uh, decision tree for classification and regression. In uh, econometric models, you have different models for classification and regression. You do not have a single model which will do the job for you. Like you can use a linear multiple multiple regression uh, to do a regression problem. Okay. Whereas you have to use a logistic regression to do classification or a linear discriminant analysis to classify classify your data or a multinomial logic to classify your data if you have multiple so if you have continuous target variable you use linear when, when you have binary target variable you use logistic and when you have multiple target uh, multi multinomial uh, or you know more than two categories of target variable you use multinomial logic logistic regression right so uh, for different types of data you use different regressions however decision tree is just one decision tree you can use for all this purpose okay you do not have to go in for different types of decision tree um, so the problems all types of problems can be uh, handled by decision tree so that's one good use of decision tree uh, it's also used many times for exploratory data analysis. Now you would uh, case come across cases where you know decision tree is not a very popular technique because it's very simple and its uh, ability to uh, you know pro provide a good uh, classification or uh, regression uh, model is is not very good. Uh, so people use this to understand the data because. Uh, when you understand the data classification through visualization, you can build a better model. So um, the decision tree can be improved by combining decision tree and by building a bagging model or a random forest model. Or maybe you can go ahead with other models like, you know, the support uh, vector machines uh, or, or a logistic regression and so on. Probably these models will do a better job, but decision tree will give you uh, a very good idea of how your data is classified into. So you'll get a better, uh, you know, uh, insight into your data by using decision tree. So it's heavily used for exploratory data analysis. It also is a baseline model that you you start with a decision tree model and you take uh, the output from the uh, model as the baseline or as the benchmark. Uh, and once uh, you uh, have the benchmark, uh, then you try out uh, every other possible model to improve on uh, uh, and to ensure that your model should perform uh, better than the benchmark one or the baseline one. So it's often used for baseline purpose, baseline modeling. Um, one of the most important use, and many people are not aware of this, obviously this is an, something used primarily in industry and not often in academical uh, activities is that it's used for segmenting your data. So if you are using a, a model for fraud detection, uh, for you know credit score, uh, credit scoring uh, or for marketing campaign, you will you will need to build models differently for different segments. How do you come to know that? Many times you will come to know that from the business itself. The business is going to tell you, okay, fine, you build a model for US and Canada market separately. Or maybe you just build a model uh, for different cities like you know, New York, one model for New York, one model for Chicago and so on. But uh, how do you know that, uh, I mean, it's easy to uh, find out the segments at the top of the uh, top of the I mean and the major segments like country like gender and so on but many a times even a continuous variable let's say income of customer could potentially be a very good segment okay you can classify data into high income middle income and low income and you do not know what the thresholds are so decision tree is going to give you a very good insight into it if income is one of the classifier in decision tree, which is 
coming very significant at the top of the tree then take that as uh, as the sig uh, segment instead of the trivial ones instead of which are very uh, obvious like country uh, or gender or or markets and so on or products and so on sometimes these continuous variables which are not thought to be very important for segmentation comes out to be very important so you get a very different type or a altogether different type of insight from the decision, uh, decision tree model which is then used for segmentation so i'll give talk more about it in the next slide just to have so here is the case okay so we are trying to predict the uh, let's say uh, success of uh, a, a marketing campaign okay the probability of success okay and when you build the decision tree model like this which is not the final model but you found that at the top of it it comes out to be income so income greater than eighty thousand dollar and income less than eighty thousand dollar now initially the business said to you that you build the model based on market build one model for us another model for india and third model for canada but you see that the the variable country is not coming at the top it is the income that is coming at the top it's not the country or any uh, you know something that is looks obvious okay now in that case if you have a constraint of having a smaller number of segment you should go ahead with income as a segment rather than country as a segment okay uh, yeah so that's one good thing with the decision tree and it may not be the final model okay you start with this segmentation and then you build let's say a logistic regression or a another uh, you know classifying uh, regression model uh, differently for income group greater than 80 and less than 80k okay so it helps in segmentation modeling okay uh, the last question i am going to discuss is what are the diagnostic checks for decision tree now you know the diagnostic checks for uh, regression models are much easier right you have r square you have c statistic in the case of logistic regression um, so the, there are standard or very popular uh, diagnostic uh, statistics or uh, metrics that you have with you to find out uh, whether uh, the model is uh, theoretically good and performing well or not so you, you find the model performance through this and diagnostic checks you can do by using you know t statistics uh, chi square statistics the significance of you know these variables and so on right um so how do you do that i mean you also have akai key information criteria squas bayesian criteria right these uh, statistics also you get as part of the output from your regression models but you don't get such statistics in decision trees how do you then do a diagnostic checks well it's very difficult it's not that simple as in regression model it is slightly more difficult not very difficult though so the way you do it is by checking the root mean square error, error uh, in a regression problem and accuracy in a um, in a classification problem however just by looking at the root mean square error uh, in the case of regression and accuracy classification the test data is not uh, is not enough so you have to use all kinds of cross validation to be able to do that okay all kinds of you know there are many kinds of cross validations you can use if you want to learn more about the cross validation there is a video uh, in my channel on the different types of cross validation you can use the link is there in the description you can always watch this video and and then you 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 are very sure about the model okay uh, second thing is that you know about the uh, significance of variable, right? Significance is uh, one thing that sets uh, regression models uh, different from the tree models. You have t-statistic, chi-square statistic, p-statistic and so on. But here you don't have that. But you can actually find out the variable importance to know which one of your variable is most important and which one is not. Just by looking at the hierarchy of variables used in the uh, making of the decision tree. So that's another uh, diagnostic check that you can do however it may not be as you know convincing uh, as a regression model and that's exactly why I have said in the beginning when it comes to interpreting your result it is always uh, interpreting your result in a way to find causal uh, relationship between predictors and target variable always good to go with a regression model over decision tree thank you